Welcome to Getting Your Voice Heard and Making a Difference by the Ark of Grace Harbor, an informative video for individuals with disabilities, family members, and stakeholders. Learn what tools are available to you to help educate legislators about the needs of people with disabilities in Grace Harbor County, Washington. legislative advocacy. Self-advocacy is deciding what you want, finding out how to get what you want, developing a plan, and carrying out a plan. Legislative advocacy is being able to communicate about the importance of a policy issue or law to people who are in a position to change it. This can be talking to a city council member, a school board representative, your state representative or senator, your governor, or the member of the United States Senate or U.S. House of Representatives, who represents you in Washington, D.C. What does it mean to be a legislative advocate? Being an effective legislative advocate does not mean that you have to live in your state capital or go to Washington, D.C. Legislators and representatives often have local or district offices that may be closer to where you live. Once you identify a nearby office, you can visit, schedule meetings, and talk to your representatives about the issues you find important. Often, it's even more helpful to build relationships with the staff people at local offices. They have more time to work on local issues and are often very interested in what's going on in their own backyards. These relationships will be a great resource when getting through to the representative. Why is being a legislative advocate for disability rights and services important? People with disabilities face many barriers, and like many minority groups, they have fought for equal access to education, employment, public facilities and services, transportation, housing, and other resources needed to more fully realize their rights as citizens. With the rise of the disability rights movement and the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, Feelings associated with the word disability have moved from a, from a focus on the disability being bad and the individual with the disability needing to be fixed to a view that includes disability as a part of diversity. After the ADA was passed, people with disabilities kept pushing and are still pushing to make sure that they get a seat at the table, vote on important issues, and have their voices heard. What this all means is that People with disabilities have come a long way, but there are still times when we need to educate others about the issue. If you aren't sure who your legislators are, you can go to app.leg.wa.gov forward slash district finder and you can find this interactive map. Now, Grace Harbor is actually divided between two different legislative districts, the 24th and the 19th. Here you can see which representatives are in each district. If you're unsure which district you're in, you can use the district finder above. Enter your street, city, state, and zip, and click Find My District, and that will pop up for you. about some tools that you can use to help you when you're advocating to your legislators. Here is the Ark of Washington State's 2021 Legislative Notebook. This gives us a lot of information about different issues that are coming up in the 2021 legislative sessions, different bills that we hope will be passed, as well as charts and data, DDA budget requests, fact sheets for DDA programs and services, reports to the legislature, the 2021 Advocacy Day schedule, the 2021 legislators and state officials list, the legislative priorities of community organizations, uh, some different resources, which some are also available in Spanish, such as hot tips. All of these are clickable links for you to use as resources when you're speaking with your legislators. For example, 
under issues for 2021, you can scroll down and find an issue that you want to speak with your legislator about. Click on it and it will bring you to a one page PDF document that you can either print out and take with you to advocacy days or that you can attach to an email and send to your legislator that way. I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about Advocacy Days, what it is and what it's going to look like for 2021. And that's a time when you can come and advocate to your legislators at the state capitol in Olympia. This year it's going to be held virtually over Zoom. So it starts this year, January 27th, 2021, from 2 to 7 p.m going to start with the legislative reception and a de developmental disabilities briefing. So if you go to this document on the Ark of Washington's website, you can see the 2021 Advocacy Day schedule. You can see what to expect at Advocacy Days. You can see all the different topics that will be talked about on each particular day. And there are also some links to find out more information. On this document, you'll also find how to access the ARCS Action Center and what that is. You'll see how to testify in a committee. You'll see the 2021 Legislative Session Bill Advancement Guidelines. And here's a little bit more information about how to make your voice heard and be an advocate. If you have questions or need help, um, in regards to advocacy days, Diana Stadden is a great person to contact. Her email address is right here, diana at arcwa.org. If you have questions about the legislative reception, you can email Shelby Sotko, S-A-T-K-O-S-N at dshs.wa.gov. Here's also a sample email that you can use to invite your legislators to the disabilities reception. So you would um, use this and fill in your information where the blue text is. An easy way to get action alerts straight to your email about upcoming issues is to visit the Arc of Washington State's Action Center at arcwa.org forward slash action dash center. Here you can see all of the different campaigns that you could join and share with your legislator. To find out what campaigns are in your area, simply put in your zip code and click search. Then you can click on sign up or you can click the share button to share to your social media. From here, you'll put in your information and you'll receive emails in the form of action alert notifications with a brief summary of the issues and easy to follow instructions to share your perspective with your legislator. You can also register to vote here. You'll click here and it will take you to the site to register to vote online. The Ark of the United States also has an action center. From their website, you can join their advocacy list. When you join, you'll get emails about upcoming national bills and topics of interest. You can also find your elected officials. Just enter your zip code and click Find Legislators. Under Take Action, you'll find links that pertain to national advocacy efforts. When you click on the buttons down here, it will take you to a different page and you can actually take action directly from their site. So for example, if you are interested in helping support this effort, you could share your story. Click on the share your story button. And you can go here, it'll take you through a little automated process where you can type in your story and it will help you um, to compile that, put that all together so that you can share it with your legislators. Um, when you see the buttons that say take action now, which a few of these say take action, take action, you can click on those and it'll guide you through a process. Uh, you can read about right over here about the bill 
and put in your information and it has an automated letter. So you're gonna actually be sending an email to legislators about the bill. So this is a great way to directly take action in a really simple format. So to find this page, you're gonna to go to thearc.org. You're going to go hover over the Get Involved tab and then click Take Action. And that will take you to the ARCs of the United States Action Center. Why do stories matter? Stories educate people about important programs and services. The Medicaid fight of 2017 is a great example of effective use of stories to educate lawmakers, community leaders, and the media. While Medicaid was under threat, the disability community fought to get the stories of people with disabilities front and center to show the importance of Medicaid in everyday life. Listing different Medicaid programs or services by name is not always very effective or compelling, but examples of real people and specific services they receive can help educate about the importance of a program and ultimately protect it from cuts. Personal stories make policy real. It's easy to talk about policies or laws in big numbers. For example, a bill may include $800 billion in cuts to Medicaid, but personal stories make these policy implications not just about numbers, but about real people. Particularly when you're trying to get someone, like a member of Congress, to change their mind on a piece of legislation it can be powerful to have someone from their district or state share their story about how a bill would impact their life. Motivate people to act. Stories are powerful. They make people feel empathy. We can relate to people telling their story and see ourselves or our families in them. For these reasons, stories help motivate people to take action, whether it's to call their legislator about a bill, show up to an event, give a donation, or support legislation. Here's some tips for telling your story with a purpose. One thing you really want to do is define your issue. The first step to that is thinking about what is the challenge or problem that you, your child, or your family is facing. Think about a problem that affects other children and families too. Consider writing one sentence about families in general and one sentence about your own family. For example, families of children with developmental delays have many more medical and therapy appointments than other children have and need Medicaid to continue to be fully funded to help with this financial burden. In my case, we have physical therapy and speech therapy every week, and we have to see three different specialists at the hospital a couple of times a year. We count on having Medicaid insurance. The second thing to, to talk about and think about is how does this challenge affect others? Or how could it affect others if nothing is done to address it? So there you could talk a little bit more on a broad scope about how many children rely on Medicaid who have a developmental disability or delay, and um, how many of them rely on appointments like you talked about for physical therapy, speech therapy, things like that. That's where to kind of get into some of those, those numbers. So what needs to change or what can be done to improve the situation? So here you could talk about how um, fully funding Medicaid or not cutting Medicaid would be helpful and it needs to happen for the situation to improve. Who has the power to make change? Um, so here you would think about who, who is your legislator? Who can you talk to? And that's where you would go back to your um, district finder and find out who the legislators in your district are. So when you're preparing your story, you might wanna do this in a Word document, or if you have um, some other kind of software, I like to use Canva. It's a free tool and you can include graphics like pictures, different things um, to make your, your presentation, your one pager look a little bit more professional. Um, so you wanna include your name, the city or town that you live in, the names, ages, and diagnoses of the people in your story, which is optional. That's optional. You want to protect the privacy of your child or loved one. Um, what do you, number two is what do you want your listener to do or what needs to be done to address your issue? So be specific and state this request in one sentence. Aim for 30 words or less. Don't just ask for support. Provide a clear action item. 
So legislators are reading a ton of things during advocacy days, during the legislative session. You want to make sure and keep it short, even if you have a lot to say. A lot of us have a lot of lived experience. We have a lot that we want to see happen. But with these one pagers, when you're telling your story, you do want to keep it concise. And like they said here, provide a clear action item. Here's my issue. Here's what needs to be done about it. For example, I'm asking you to vote for blank, or I'm here because I want you to change this policy, or I want you to provide funding for a program that, when possible, you may want to start by thanking the listener for something they've done in the past that you appreciate, like voting for a bill or supporting funding for a program. Three, what is the challenge or problem that you, your child, or your family is facing? Number four, why is, the, why is it important to you and other families? Tell a short story in four to five sentences about how this issue has affected you and your family. If possible, use positive example. A situation where things went well and why you want others to have a similar experience instead of a negative example, saying something didn't work because. So stop and check. Review your answers for comments that could have made the listener or audience feel criticized or responsible for problems you've faced. You definitely don't want to come at it in a combative way with, with your legislator. You want to come at it in an appreciative way. So how could other families or, or the community benefit from what you're asking for? What results could be achieved? So think about that and add that to your, to your one pager. Um, add in there some kind of some hopes and dreams uh, for your family and your community. And end by restating that your request by end by restating your request and thanking them for their time. All right, now we're going to talk about a handy guide to crafting your message. You can use your hand to help structure your lobby day meeting and make sure that you say all that you need to say. So when you're going to advocacy days, this is a great time to use this. When you're going to speak with a legislator, you have a specific topic that you want to talk about. This is a great way to make sure that you're remembering all of your speaking points. So the first finger of the thumb is to introduce yourself. Tell your legislator your name, where you live, and that you are one of his or her constituents. The second finger, the index finger, is what is my issue? You want to say, I'm here to talk about disability rights, or I'm here to talk about this specific bill, um, or any other issue. Outline the basic topic and describe the bill. The third finger, the middle finger, is why I care. This is where you want to share your personal story. You can talk about your child or family member or loved one with a disability. Um, you could talk about how this bill specifically has impacted you or your community. For example, you can say, I care about this issue because, or this issue is important to me because. The fourth finger, the ring finger, is why the legislator should care. This is where you use the talking points and messages that you can find on the Action Center, that you can find in the legislative notebook. Um, or any other research uh, materials that you might have on the bill. So the fifth finger, the pinky finger, is where you make your ask. This is where you ask for their support. You can say, will you support bill number, and whatever the bill number is, or can we count on you to support, you know, disability rights funding? Um, finally, the whole hand. This is where you give them a handshake, thank them for their time. Be sure to express your appreciation for the legislator's time and considering the issues that you've brought up today. If you're looking to get started with advocacy, a great way to learn how, meet like-minded people, and be a part of a group effort is to join an advocacy organization or group. The ARC partners with many other advocacy groups. We partner with self-advocates in groups such as SAIL, or Self-Advocates in Leadership, People First of Washington, and Allies in Advocacy. Parents of both children and adults can connect through parent-to-parent, -parent, parent coalitions, and local chapters of the ARC. 
The Community Advocacy Coalition is another avenue for statewide partnerships with self-advocates, parents, and providers of community services essential to people with developmental disabilities, and other advocates, including Community Residential Services Association, Community Employment Alliance, Disability Rights Washington, and DD Ombuds. Self Advocates in Leadership is a coalition of over 200 people with developmental disabilities interested in shaping public policy in Washington State. SEAL is unique because the numbers, members of the coalition have developmental disabilities as well as the support staff. They have worked on changing at least one public policy during each legislative session since 2004. Members of SAIL are involved in everything from meetings with legislators who will sponsor new legislation testifying at hearings, phone calls, letters, as well as delivering personal messages. If you're interested in learning more about SAIL and their current activities and bills of interest, visit their website at www.selfadvocatesinleadership.com. Allies in Advocacy is a group of individuals with disabilities who came together to strengthen the disability civil rights movement especially for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. They've been active for over 30 years and have focused on issues such as inadequate community supports, abuse and neglect, and sub-minimum wage. Allies in Advocacy developed a proclamation for the dignity and rights of all human beings. With the support of Disability Rights Washington, the Allies have advanced the disability rights movement in Washington and nationally. They accumulate allies and technically assist other disability groups who seek self-sufficiency, advocacy, and leadership development. Washington State Parent and Family Coalitions help parents of children with an intellectual or developmental disability to connect, to connect with other parents for support and resources. Throughout Washington State, you will find parent coalitions that have parents and guardians who have walked the walk and can help parents organize their voices and be heard on issues important to them. These coalitions are strong, organized advocates for people with disabilities and their families in Washington State. You can find more on the ARC of Washington's website. Go to Connect and then Parent Coalitions. And here you can find clickable links to find the Washington State Parent Coalition in your county. Disability Rights Washington is a private nonprofit organization that protects the rights of people with disabilities statewide. Their mission is to advance the dignity, equality, and self-determination of people with disabilities. They work to pursue justice on matters related to human and legal rights. They focus their legal resources on systemic cases, which will improve service systems for people with disabilities. They exist because society and service systems are not always fair or responsive to people with disabilities. They work for change in policies, laws, and systems that promote freedom from abuse and neglect, legal rights, adequate funding, appropriate supports and services, and communities that involve everyone. Disability Rights Washington is a member organization of the National Disability Rights Network, and serves as the designated protection and advocacy agency for Washington State. The Office of the Developmental Disabilities Ombuds, or DD Ombuds, is a private independent office focused on improving the lives of persons with developmental disabilities in Washington State. The team is comprised of staff experienced in serving the needs of people with developmental disabilities. The Ombuds have offices in Seattle, Spokane, and Olympia. Their mission statement is informing the legislature's work to ensure safe, quality, developmental disability services. The DD Ombuds also provide information, investigate complaints, monitor procedures, review facilities and residences, conduct investigations, recommend changes, and write reports. When you advocate, you are helping change lives. Whether you find your legislators using the District Finder tool and call, write, or email them, participate in advocacy days, speak with your school district, city council, or mayor, join an advocacy group, or create and share your personal story to help change policy, you are making a difference. So visit the legislative notebook, find those policies or bills that are meaningful to you, and get out there and make change happen.
Thank you for watching this video on getting your voice heard and making a difference. For more information, you can visit us at www.arcgh.org. If you have questions, give us a call at 360-537-7000 or email us at info at arcgh.org.